The last thing I want to talk about is using type as artwork. Now we did a little bit of this already. We came in and created that A shape with type. We then converted that A shape over to a shape and then using our define custom shape we converted that into a custom shape. So we then had artwork from that letter. So that, that is the basic approach. But what I want to show you here is all of the additional typefaces that you have available to you. Now to easily see this you need to have a type tool that shows you all of the glyphs in your type. You can find that type tool in other programs. It's already included in other programs. We don't have a specific type menu here. For instance you can have it over in InDesign. You can look at all of the glyphs inside of a file, a type file. But let me bring up one program that I have that I found a long time ago. It's a shareware program. I'm not even sure if you can still find it, but there are lots of programs like this. Let me just bring this one up. Here are a couple of programs. This is Character Map. This comes with Windows, and you can use this to find different characters inside of fonts. Let's take a look at this quickly. Here's Times New Roman, and here's the type fonts or type characters in Times New Roman. Each one of these is a glyph. We talked about glyphs a little bit previously. So this is one that comes with Windows. There is something like this inside of InDesign that you can use directly to see what is inside of the font face. I have a Shara one I found called Character Map Pro, which I like a lot. It has a real nice window in here. It has a nice enlarged view over here. And it shows you down below here what the keystroke is to bring that up. I'm not sure if you can still find this one or not, but it's a great program. Now, on any font, if you look through the font, you will find that there are lots and lots of characters available inside of that font that can be used. Lots of different characters. We have lots of stuff even inside that particular font. As I scroll down here, we can see there are different characters hidden inside of this font. Here's some Greek characters, for instance. Hebrew characters, all of these are included inside of this font. Here's some Russian characters that are inside the same font. So lots of stuff available. There's symbols inside of this particular font. Lots of different things available inside of the font. Let's go back to our default character set. Now along with this, there are fonts that have specific, that are specifically designed for working with imagery. A couple or a few that come with Windows, I'll just scroll way down here towards the bottom. They have some very useful fonts called Dingbat fonts. And here we go, we have Webdings and then Wingdings, Wingdings 2 and Wingdings 3. These fonts just have pictures inside of them. So instead of having letters in the font, you have pictures. And you can use these pictures as artwork inside of your is right inside of your file. Here's a nice little ocean oriented one right there. Now on this one, if you just double click on this, it copies that character up. Notice that this is the closing bracket and it's in Wingdings. So to use this one, I'll go to my type tool. I'll just click into my document and then I will do edit paste because I copied that in. There's that character inside of this Gigi font that we used for our Halloweenables. I'll now scroll down to the Dingbat fonts that we're working with. That was in Wingdings right there. And there it is. There's the character. I now can use this either as type. I can change its size, whatever else I want to as type. But I also can convert this to artwork. Let's take a look at that. Now the process is, if you work with type layer here, the process is to go over here and then convert this into a shape. We want to make, the, make a shape out of this particular typeface. So right click and convert to shape. Right click right on the type layer itself, convert to shape. As you can see here, it's now a shape as opposed to being a piece of text. Now that we have this as a shape, we can go up here to edit and define a custom shape from this. Just give it a name. I'll call it wheel. Choose OK. It's now a custom shape. So I can find this inside of my shape list. Let's just pull our layers out of the way. So I'll go here to our shape, custom shapes right there. We look at the bottom of our custom shapes list. 
and there's that wheel. To use it, just click. I can then click and drag, and there is that custom shape pulled right out of that typeface. So take a look for those. There are a few to work with. There's Webdings is one of these. Lots of images in here. Wingdings is another one. Wingdings 2 and then Wingdings 3. You can find more of these. Just go online and do a search. Just do a search for free Dingbat fonts and you'll get a ton of these things with just all kinds of imagery that can be used as real quick, fast, and easy graphics. All you have to do is convert it into a symbol. Of course, once we have it as a symbol, we also can come in and place different styles on this. Look at our styles over here. Place a style right onto that and then convert that into a whole different look. So it's a real nice way to have fast, instant, easy artwork. Just going through and trying some of these different styles. Just go through, find one that looks good. Those are all kind of weird. Or we could go through and it's kind of nice. A little bit of a, a wood look on that. We can go through and we can then apply that and come in and adjust our effects even more. Let's just double click on the effects, effects line here bring the effects up and then we'll modify the effects and what I want to work on actually is the bevel and emboss. We're going to be modifying the bevel and emboss on this one. Here we go. There's the bevel and emboss and let's just adjust the bevel a little bit here. Let's set this to a chisel hard and let's play the size a bit. There we go. Let's kind of bring that up. And that gives us a nice three-dimensional effect to this ship's wheel. There we go. So we've taken just a dingbat font, converted that into a shape, made a custom shape out of that, used the custom shape, applied some styling to that, layer styles to that, and we have a real nice instantaneous bit of customized artwork in here. So easy to do. Let's add a little drop shadow on that. There you go. Easy to do as long as you know that you have these different fonts, these dingbat fonts that you can then pull shapes out of. So take a look for those. Look on, on the web for those things. You also find a lot of interesting shapes hidden inside of regular fonts. So take a look at your regular fonts as well. And I think you'll find a ton of imagery that you can use very quickly as fast and easy clip art. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. And finally, you can get all of my training videos on DVD at howtogurus.com. Thanks again for watching.